All right, and Moses joining me on the desk for our first look at sports and the Lloydminster Bandit Pipeline. Bobcats return to the ice for their best of five series versus Leduc. Yeah, looking to shake off uh, what was a tough game, too, in Leduc uh, the other night, anyways. Uh, looking to come out and play hard this time around. Bobcats back at home, looking for that bounce back win. We'll go to the first period and pick it up where it's going to be Bryce Kindop. We'll get by the Leduc D man and wires it low blocker side. It's 1 0 Cats. And right after that, it's more from the good guys. Ty Smith shot will be stopped. Logan Ganey getting a few cracks before he puts it home. It's now 2-0 Lloyd. Now second period will go. Cat shorthanded. Chase Water sprung loose on a breakaway. Gets tripped, but still put the puck in the back of the net. It was that type of game for the Baby Cats. 3-0. Another shorthanded breakaway. This time Trey Doyen walks in. Quick release. He scores. Ho-hum. Leduc's Kent Nolan was yanked after that one. Bobcats were now up 5-0 after 40 minutes. Scoring to the third, a lucky bounce here for Leduc. It's going to be Bradley Gerard or Gerard, who will get it out to Dakota Hubner. He will go top shelf. It's now 5-1, but moments after that goal, it's going to be Kobe Walker, who scores his first of the postseason, making it 6-1 Bobcats. The teams would exchange goals after that, making it 7-2 the final. Bobcats looking to close out the series Wednesday night in Leduc guys responded right and they have all year and you know I had no doubt they were going to respond today and they did they played a full 60 minutes right off the bat and you know the difference was I thought we got pucks deep and we just outworked them down low and um, you know we stuck around the net you know instead of going to net and then going off for backdoor we stood there paid the price and we got rewarded today. It's a great feeling to come back back to our own bar and there's great fans everyone was really supportive we just started off strong and just kept kept it going the whole game. Now, they didn't capture any hardware, but the, or at least league hardware, that is. The Lloydminster Bobcats did, however, hand out their own in their annual awards banquet. He's, uh, he's been a huge part for the team. Uh, gives us a chance to win every night. So uh, I'd like to ask Alex LeClaire up to the stage. No surprise here. Goalie Alex LeClaire walked away with the MVP honors for the team in 42 games. The 20-year-old had 30 wins and four shutouts. If it wasn't for all the guys around me. Uh, we're practicing hard, putting a lot of effort every day, and it's a process of getting up. You you have to, you want to be better. You have, you need to want to be better every day, and just trying to evolve throughout the game with the coaches, with our game plan. And no, it's I'm pretty flattered to be to be considered as a as the MVP. Meanwhile, Captain Taylor Mulder walked away with his second straight Most Dedicated Player award. I just work hard and I do do the do the jobs that aren't the funnest to do on the ice, you know, working in the corners and uh, going to the front of the net. And uh, yeah, you don't get noticed that much for that stuff, but it's stuff that makes a difference, that's for sure. Other winners on the day included Ryan Chanel for the Coach's Award, Chris Spriggs chosen as, uh, or for the Captain's Award, that is. Top defenseman was given to Christian Lloyd. Rookie of the Year, no surprise, Noah Bald. Connor Odeline walked away with Most Improved Player. Graydon Smith took home the Community Player Award. And the Academic Award went to Zach Giroux. All the winners, besides the Coach's Award, was chosen by their teammates. The Lakeland Rustlers men's and women's curling teams had high hopes this weekend for grabbing a medal and earn a berth to nationals. We'll start with the men who had a disappointing weekend, not fighting for gold, but they could still walk out with something around their neck in the bronze medal game versus Red Deer College. We'll pick it up in the fifth end, down one nothing in line one. Brandon Cookson looking to remove the blue stone in the eight foot. A simple hit and stick would work to collect the pair. Instead, his shooter will begin to curl out of the rings. It's just a single for the wrestlers to tie it up. Now seventh end, down two one. Cookson needing a draw to grab a piece of the button. Gets by the guard, but doesn't get the curl he needs. It's a steal of one for Red Deer, and we'll go to the eighth end. It's Cookson needing a draw for a deuce. Uh, this time he comes up with the perfect draw weight. He'll tie it up at three, sending this one to extras. And in that ninth end, check out that log jam. Running four deep plus the off-center guard. Cookson with his final stone needing to get by that guard and try to run back those rocks. Instead, he hits the guard and wrecks. And all the hopes of a medal in Nationals are dashed. The Kings win 4-3 in nine ends. To the women's side, it's going to be Matea Pittman and the Lakeland Rustlers facing the Nate Ooks in the bronze medal draw. Second end down 2 nothing with Hammer. Rustlers needing a draw against one. Just needs a part of the eight foot, but it runs out of steam. A steal of one for the Ooks, and the Rustlers are in a deeper hole. After the teams traded singles, Pittman and five drawing against four, needing a good chunk of the button. 
but she will wreck on the Uke stone. It would be a steal of two. It's now 5-1 Nate. The wrestlers got caught playing catch up and it hurt them. Nate wins 6-2 in six ends. It's like very intimidating to see the scoreboard and like you have to totally change the way that you're playing to try and generate those two points and we're we were playing a very much hitting game in the beginning, and I think we should have played more of a draw game just to generate those points earlier on in the game, but um, yeah, we weren't successful in that.